Farmcast. Welcome back to Hulk Reef. On today's episode, you've probably already seen in the thumbnail, we got a pair of garden eels. So I've been waiting a long time to get a pair of these. These guys have been in quarantine for a couple of weeks, so I want to make sure they know they're pest free, parasite free, before putting them in a hulk, very important. Uh, and plus, I want to make sure they're eating before I even put them in the tank. A lot of them are very picky. I've been feeding these ones mysis shrimp and PD pellets. I got them onto that, so everything's been working really good. Put a little bit of garlic on there. Big believer putting garlic. I know a lot of you guys have messaged me. Garlic's not good for them, but I've been doing it for years. Everything's been surviving for me. So we're gonna learn a little bit about these guys. So I got two different ones in here. I have like a copper one, and I have the spotted uh, garden eel. Uh, they're about eight inches long. You're gonna see them here in a minute. Uh, I've been playing for a while to get a few garden eels. So when I place my rockwork in the tank, I really hope that they're gonna go in this corner because they need four or six inches of substrate or your sand to burrow in because that's where they're gonna live. And somewhere it has to be moderately peaceful and still has lots of flow. We'll hit that in a minute. So the plan is to put it over here in the corner. I have the rocks built up. It's a lot deeper. It's about five, six inches of sand in the corner here for them. It's a perfect spot. And with flow, it's very important. You can't have too much flow, but you have to have flow because as soon as they burrow into their tunnel, they don't want to leave. So they need that flow for the food to flow by, and then they're going to grab it, pull it back into the burrow, and they're going to feed. Um, they're going to feed on a zooplankton as well. They have really great eyes. They can see every little bug or anything that's in the water, and that is what they're going to eat as well. So the zooplankton, the, the PE pellets, and the mice uh, shrimp, they're really enjoying. So I already know that they're eating that, so hopefully everything will go really well. Plus, they are skittish as hell. Anything scares them. like. Even a shrimp going by will scare them. But even when I go to feed them, I'll probably have to feed it, step back, and just watch them feed because they're like, they're gone. And like, hopefully the gobies or anybody won't bother them because they're, you know, they're a peaceful fish. They're gonna bring a lot of life to it, but they are skittish and hopefully nobody's gonna bug them. So you wanna make sure and put them in a somewhat peaceful tank for them to do really well and survive. I know a few people right now, they've had at least two years in their tank, but I'm hoping to get a couple more because they're like a community fish. They like to hang out together. If you guys have seen some of the videos online where they're in the ocean, all their heads are just popping out, just hanging out. They're all waiting for some food to come by. So we are gonna get them hopefully. My plan is I'm gonna shut my power heads all down. We're gonna net them. I'm gonna place my arm in here, get them to this area. I'm really hoping this is where they're gonna sit up. They can go anywhere in Hall Creek, I don't care. But for visual purposes, when I'm sitting here on the couch, I really wanna see them. I really enjoy that they would just go here in the corner. So the care level, so four to six inches of substrate or sand that's in your tank, a peaceful area. You want flow, but a little bit of flow to make sure there's food going by and that'll keep them happy in that area. Usually they don't want a bunch of rock, live rock and all that, but you know, they're still gonna have to deal with it because I want rock to put my corals on. But that whole end is theirs or wherever they wanna go, but my plan is in there. So I will do updates on how they are doing and hopefully I'll get a couple more if I can. So let's go ahead. Let's put these two uh, garden meals in here and see what happens. And then we'll do some updates hopefully in the future, see how well they're doing. Cause these are, these are pretty exciting and they give a little bit of character to the tank. Plus with them as well. So when they burrow into their, into their holes, they always like to swim backwards. So a lot of the time they're going to swim backwards and not jump, but it's good to have, you know, a fitted screen on top of your tank for any jumpers going out of your tank. So definitely, you know, you don't want them to jump out because you're, you know, they're gonna die and you're gonna waste your money. So I'll bring you guys in first, show you guys what they look like inside the bucket. And then we're gonna go try to get these babies in the tank and see how it goes. So come on in, let's check this. So here we go, see? They look like snakes. They're very long, like, I don't know, they're over eight inches. They gotta be at least almost 12 inches in length. And that's why you need so much substrate for them to actually survive and do well. And then, I'll show you. So this is the plan. We're gonna put them right here in this corner. And it's it's really deep here. You can't tell, but the tank goes down below here. So it's pretty deep. That is the plan. So I know this area is deep, over there is deep in that corner. Um, over in that corner is deep as well. But it's like anything in reefing, whatever you want it to do, it's not gonna do. So hopefully, you know, we're gonna get these two nice guys in here. I'll zoom you in. They look like a snake. See, this one's like a really nice, cool copper color. And then there's the spotted one, where are you? And there's the spotted guy. He's like 12, almost 12. I didn't realize they were literally like that long. It's hard to tell since I've been walking to them for like two weeks. All right, 
So let's try to get these guys into Hall Green. I've got my net. The plan is to hopefully catch them both in here at the same time. One release, one catch, and get them right into this corner, and that's the plan. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, so I got both of them right here. Let's, so let's see if we can get them in the corner. So now I got my, let's see if they'll go in on their own. I'd rather them just burrow in there. That'd be amazing. Hmm. Let's just let them do their thing. That spotted one, come on. Cause I said that they like just went backwards, so. Copper one's almost dead. I'll try to bring the camera in for you guys. So they're slowly peeking out of the out of the net. Let them do their thing. Hopefully they'll just burrow in there. I got all my pumps off. So I'll keep it calm. Come on, little guys. Oh. It'd be nice if they just burrow in there right now. One guy, he's venturing out. The other guy's going back in the net. It's like a catch and release program. Let's see if we can get one. Can't see the net forever. Wish the green guy would turn around. That'd be wicked. There we go, he's digging. Awesome, okay, one down. Now we gotta get Buddy to do the same thing. Okay, we got that far. See if we can get number two. Come on, buddy, to burrow. Be with your buddy. Maybe make him a little fatigue. Come on. It's a perfect spot for them right here if they just burrow. Burrow with your buddy.
just want him to do like the other guy did. He's digging. He's digging. Here we go. Come on, buddy. Keep digging. It's really deep there, so they should both be able to go. He's doing his thing. Let's let him do his thing. There we go. All right, I don't know about you, but that was pretty awesome. I didn't know if it was going to catch or not, but we have them exactly where I want them. We got to actually see them burrow on camera, so that was pretty cool. Man, that was pretty awesome. I really like that and hopefully they'll do really well so we give you guys a couple more updates. But make sure that if you do quarantine them that they're eating before you put them in your reef tank so they're going to be successful. So another pretty cool addition to the Hulk Reef and I'm excited to see how they do. And hopefully in the future I pick up a few more. I'd like to maybe have six or more in the tank so it could really be a community. So thanks for tuning this week guys. I really want to show you guys those new little critters for in the tank. If you guys could hit the like button and if you could subscribe, it would even be better. So please subscribe and hit that like button.